Hey y'all, it's Laura, and I thought we'd do a little craft room tour today. It's been quite a while since I've done one, and I have switched rooms and completely moved everything around, so I thought, you know what? It's time. I've cleaned up my space, which let me tell you is a rare thing, and now I'm going to show you how I organize my stash. So this is a broad overview of my room have left the lights on over my desk just simply because it's kind of dark in here otherwise. Beyond my desk are my two Calyx units and the layouts and mixed media above them. And then over there is my craft closet. So we will take a little bit of a dive into the space and I'll show you how I organize my scrapbooking supplies. To begin with, I do have a standing desk on top of a regular Ikea desk that allows me to switch between the sitting at my craft desk and then standing at my computer, which just helps with back issues. I do have a couple of layouts and a photo above this desk. I have my computer and my printer and my microphone. Back there is just extra copy paper and next year's planner that I'm setting up. But this is just where I work on editing photos and general office stuff. Over at my workspace, I have four layouts up on the wall along with the craft letters that I made and have a video for here on the channel. I have my working space and the drawers down the side. I just have a regular office chair. It's not on like wheels or anything. Just a pretty basic chair really. And as a quick peek, down here I have a basket that I keep extra kits in and then my trimmer stays right here next to me at all times to make it easy to grab and bring up to my desk. Now, how I film my videos is using this mount and my phone. So it's attached to a small stick, which is clamped to the back of my desk. And then I have these three lights that came from Amazon. And I just have them, they came with little tripod legs. And so they're set up all around my workspace to give me plenty of light for my videos. Now, I like to have a lot of my stuff within easy reach. And so I do have a Fiskars mixed media mat, which is primarily what I work on. It has two purposes. One, when I splatter and whatnot, it catches that and makes it easy to clean up. And two, it gets rid of the shine from my lights. And so that way my background of my videos is not super shiny in your face, which is great. <laughs> Very helpful indeed. I have a picture of my husband holding my baby niece some adhesives, some small bowls, which are great for just sorting embellishments into while I'm working with them. All of my favorite pens are back in that little Ikea holder. I have a new stamp, a little date stamp here, and my favorite Muji pen right up front. I have my iPod, iPad that I've had for a while and watch a lot of YouTube on. And then this little container has my tape and a lot, my favorite punch, notebook punch, and a lot of little tiny bits and pieces that I add for scattering in the background. Some sequins, some tiny hearts and stars, some word phrase stickers, things like that. And then over here, <laughs> I have a kit that I'm currently working in. This is October's hip kit with some bits and pieces added to it. My favorite scissors sit right up front. Next to it is a basket that I keep all of my printed photos in to scrap, as well as a list of the layouts that I want to do. This is a little trash can that I use for fussy cutting. I have decorated it myself. And this makes for a very, very productive setup for me. I can reach everything that I need and uh, find things pretty quickly right around my desk. Now, normally, I tend to stack things up over here, and I've just cleaned it so it doesn't look quite so bad, but normally this is kind of a wreck, this area. I have a We Are Memory Keepers paper storage sorter thingy here, 
with white cardstock on top, Vicky Booten foundation paper on the second level, gray and navy cardstock on the third level, and black cardstock on the bottom. I reach for those pretty frequently. Then I just have some tissues. These are some leftover bits and pieces from previous kits, and so I just leave them here so I can grab for them. If I need one more thing for a layout, I look through here first. These are my stamps. So this is not all of my stamps, but it's the most of them. And it's a mix of like little citrus twist stamps. They're just organized by size to make them easier to flip through. Uh, I don't mind flipping through things. You'll find that's a theme in my room. <laughs> I actually really enjoy looking through my stuff. So I have the little bitty stamps up front, the slightly larger stamps, slightly larger, slightly larger, etc. And the only ones that are in like cases are Felicity Jane ones or these Catherine Pooler ones that have dies in the back. So that makes them pretty easy to look through. These ones here are my favorite stamps. So these are the ones that I actually do reach for fairly often, not, not super often, not every layout, but fairly often. And so I put them right there so easy to grab. These are just cleaners, stamp cleaners that I forget to use. Back here is my stencils. So I have the larger stencils in the back. Then I have the Tim Holtz stencils together, some medium sized stencils here. This, put it over there. This is a little binder from Hobby Lobby. And I have page protectors in here with all of my small stencils with a little piece of cardstock behind them so that I can see the design easily. I do have shapes together, like all the hearts are together. And then I put the stars together. After that, it's pretty much every man for himself and just kind of put the circles together, more circles and just kind of randomly after that. It started out with the system and then the system disappeared. Now Vicki Booten's stencils already have holes in them. So I just pop them in here with a piece of cardstock in between so I can see them. That's all Vicki Booten stencils. I really like her stencils. And at the back are just some Prima stencils and some of these like face stencils. I decided were not as important, so I'm just gonna shove them at the back. But that makes it easy for me to flip through and find the stencil that I'm looking for if I want a small one. Otherwise, they get lost in this container, which is just a soft cover storage container that sits quite nicely back there. Behind it is the boards that I use to take photos for Instagram and the end of my YouTube videos. I have a one foam core board back there, and then just a poster board with a wood design. So before I forget, just below the uh, Kleenexes, I have a an Alex drawer system under my Ikea desk. And I have two of these, but the other one just has a bunch of office supplies, so I'm not gonna worry about that one too much. But this one actually has crafty stuff. So top drawer, I have my acrylic blocks, I have twine, I have spare pens back here. I have one container of tiny brads that I never use. I have these little, multiple little containers of punched and die cut hearts, stars, and these are sequins. And then several sizes of acrylic blocks. <laughs> And then these are flat alphas. They are the tiny little alphas, a stack of those. And then these are the puffy alphas, a variety of those, plenty of those, really like those small ones. So that is drawer number one. Drawer number two has uh, foam. I have foam back here that I don't use as much anymore, but it's there some white vellum that I reach for fairly often. This is the Paige Evans bookbinding tool. This is my archival ink. I have black and gray colors I use most often. I have a white stays on pigment ink that I've used once and didn't love, but we're gonna keep trying with it. Some Versamark ink. These are Catherine Pooler inks. I don't have a lot. I think I have about nine. 
and I love them, but I don't do a lot of stamping, so I don't end up pulling them out much. I need to do more because I have some beautiful colors and I do love them. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. I have a couple of uh, templates back here. So I have some quilting templates. I use these mo mostly for stitching and for drawing cutting shapes because I don't have a silhouette anymore. I have stars, hearts, and florals. And then some stitching templates, multiple stitching templates that I haven't used in ages, but hey, I've got them. So I could use them potentially. <laughs> On to drawer number three. This one's pretty messy. It just stays pretty messy. There's just no way around it. Uh, everything falls down every time I move the drawer. So what are you going to do? Uh, this one's mostly extra adhesives in the back. I have foam adhesive in here as well as like glue dots and things like that. Uh, this is, I have some Velcro that I use for mini albums and a lot of glue pens. This is my favorite glue pen, the tonic glue pen. So when I see them on sale, I buy a bunch and just kind of chuck them in there. Uh, again, you know, I'm a messy person. The rest is clean because I just cleaned it, guys. <laughs> this is not an ongoing cleanliness thing. This is just me being messy. This is a project I'm working on for my daughter's stocking stuffers and then some epoxy circles for making my own epoxy flare. So that's those. Uh, and then the bottom two drawers just have giant punches. I don't reach for these very often, but I do like them. And again, because I don't have a silhouette anymore, I find these more useful. The next drawer has actually was funny. <laughs> this drawer has the ones that I reach for the most often. That's why they're so messy uh, because I reach for them and then chuck them back in. Uh, but the big ones up here just don't get used much. I don't know why. They just don't. So that's all that's in the drawers. And then out here, I have a uh, Rascog type cart from Michaels. So let me get a little bit closer and we can go through this one. So I have two of these carts. That one in the back is an actual Rascog. This one is from Michaels. I will be doing a video comparing the two for you to let you know what I think of one over the other. But for today, we're just gonna have a little tour of what's in them. So this basket came from Hobby Lobby. It's really tall and it holds all of my thickers. So this is all of the alpha stickers that don't go with a collection in particular or that I didn't want to keep with a collection. I have them sorted by metallics and white, black, and color in the back. And these have gold and then silver and then a couple of coppers in the back. So it's easy for me to flip through and find the colors I want. I also have, except for these chipboard ones, which I really want to use up, so I put them at the front. I have a system of alpha, 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 alpha. And at the back of the alphas are the word phrases. That way I can quickly find if I want alphas or if I want word phrase thickers. Now in uh, within this, if I have two sets of the same pack type of alphas, then I put them together so that I can find the backups easily. This is my stitching foam from We Are Memory Keepers. And this is the little pokey tool kit that came with my binding tool from Paige Evans. I don't really use the binding tool very often, but I do use that pokey tool pretty often. I know it's called an all, but pokey tool is such a fun word. <laughs> phrase. So this is from Ikea, this little latch on thing here. And I just put my most used punches, which is mostly small, small punches. I have heart stars, circles, and hexagons with one little flower that I just never use, but it's there. And a butterfly that I sometimes use, but these are the ones that I tend to reach for the most. And because they're small, they get lost easily. So I just keep them right here. Next to the basket, I have my tiny little guillotine trimmer from Fiskars and then a journal. And then on the second level, I have uh, an extra gold mist uh, water bottle. This is a like a, an acrylic piece of acrylic that I use for mixing paint on. I have a basket of uh, paint brushes, tools, just, just regular spatulas, things like that. 
In the back behind that is another basket that has hand punches and my stapler. I have this little container that actually sits in a little plastic bit at the bottom. And this came from Tuesday morning. I'm not sure what brand it is. I don't think it has a brand. It might just be off brand, not sure. But I have, of course, labeled these to make it easy for me to grab what I'm looking for if I think that I need just a little something extra. And I can pull that out, pop it open, and add it to my page. Uh, over here to the, to the right side, I have a set of tags. So this is extra tags that I can quickly grab for. Behind that are my little sponge daubers and uh, some palettes, some cups for water, and the wipes that I use to clean up. Then down to the bottom level, this is all my mixed medias that I reach for most often. So over here I have watercolor pencils and uh, my watercolor metallics from Prima. And then I have uh, Jane Davenport um, pigment things down there. I have some Jane Davenport tissue and these are Vicki Booten crayons, art crayons. This is some modeling paste. And these are all of my alpha stamps. So they're in order by size. My smallest at the top, largest at the bottom. Apologize if this is a bit shaky, <laughs> trying to do it one-handed. And then these little containers come from Ikea as well. I have roller stamps in the first two, which I rarely use, but I'm trying to use more. And some acrylic paints that I really love, especially the metallic Heidi Swap paints in the back. Those are some of my favorites. Now coming around the side, I have this little basket that came with the cart and I keep my most used Nuvo here. So I have a uh, kind of a, oh, like a rose gold of sorts, but not that gold. It's antique rose, but it's, it's one of my favorite, like, a, it's like a, almost a silvery pink. I have gold with glitter, white, silver, and regular gold, which I keep upside down so that it will work for me because I use it a lot and it's about half gone. My Heidi Swap Color Shine is here. It's my last bottle and y'all, it has some issues. I don't know why it does this, but it is super annoying. I've cleaned it a hundred times. Now this cart also came with these interesting little pegs. And the only thing I could think to put on here was washi. So that's what I put on here. And uh, I just, I swap them out every once in a while, just try to uh, get them on a page. And when I get tired of them, I swap them out from the larger container I have in my Calyx unit. At the back, I have a small tray here that holds some of my favorite tools, my favorite paintbrushes, uh, ink blender and stitching stuff. Back there, I usually use white. I have some extra Nuvo that I do like and I uh, often reach for. Then I have a roll of paper towel. And these two are empty, like these little pegs and this platform at the bottom are empty. And I just haven't figured out what to put there yet. That bottom tray having holes around the sides is, is not great. So <laughs> still thinking about what should go there. So next to my desk is this cute little bed that my dog sleeps in. She likes to keep me company in my craft room. So I gave her her own little space in here. And she's usually asleep in here, but at the moment she is outside. Now let's take a look at my second Rascog cart. Now this Rascog doesn't have any of those hanging off pieces because I don't keep this next to my desk. It's just holding extra materials I wanted to have easy access to. The other one stays right next to my desk at all times and has things that I reach for all the time. So to begin with, this is a bag from 31 and I use this front pocket for the packaging bags from ephemera and stickers. And I use this to hold fussy cut flowers and icons uh, when I'm preparing a collection. I like to keep those and I use them for fussy cutting. These are some um, glassine bags and little paper bags that I sometimes pop in for hidden journaling. Inside of this cart, this little cart, I almost said cart, this little bag is a variety of extra embellishments, mostly stickers that don't go with a specific collection. I've just picked them up on sale or just liked them. And I use them to build some of my kits for my stash kits 
without having to break up collections for embellishments. This is also good for if I'm working on a layout and just need one more thing. I can also come and look in here and quickly flip through to see if there's anything that will work on a layout. Now behind there, I have this page protector full of cut files that Christina has cut for me at Redefine Creative. And behind them are is a little citrus twist bag that has like smaller cut files. That way I don't lose them. And they are in Ziploc bags with what they are marked on the top. So I could easily find what I am looking for in this little bag. Sometimes it's bits and pieces that go inside the larger cut files. Uh, so it's just easy way to find them. And I just tuck those back there. On the second level, these are um, supplies that I use for other specific projects. So I have three Citrus Twist kits and several L Studio kits for when I'm doing Pocket Life, uh, Project Life um, pocket pages. I can easily just grab these and start working on them. I don't have to set create a whole kit for it. These are already put together for that purpose. I have some empty containers in the back and I pull those out for uh, when I start a new kit and I'm just looking through things. I often need a little container to just tuck just chuck things into so I'm not throwing them on my desktop to lose. <laughs> I have all of my American Craft sticker books here and six by eight papers and paper pads from Chamel and L Studio because I use these for smash booking primarily. Also, this glue stick is part of this. Back here is more for art journaling. These are art journaling stamps, uh, mostly Prima ones. Uh, a couple of others. Uh, some of them in here are background stamps. And then I have some extra envelopes for stamps that don't currently have anything in them. And this back here is a brush and palette set that my husband got for me. And it is a really, really nice watercolor set. And this is a board that I attach watercolor paper to, to do watercoloring on. And I don't do that very often but I do really enjoy it when I find the time. And then down at the bottom are the actual in progress <laughs> journals. I have my smash book, my current smash book, my current art journal, uh, a couple of mini albums I'm still working on, my childhood Heidi Swap album, uh, a Bible journaling book I haven't started. I have some folios and a mini album. Oh, everything fell down folios and a mini album that I intended to start haven't started three in progress traveler's notebooks I haven't touched in ages and some extra bags that I use for my kits so I have some larger two gallon bags rolled up and then some smaller one gallon bags here so that is this rascog now we'll move on to the calyx units Okay, so these are my two Calyx units. They are four by four units. And I do have four layouts up there in shadow boxes, along with a family photo from many, many years ago. And we're gonna get in closer in just a minute, but I just wanna give you kind of an overall look here. There's a little brown table over there by my closet. And I usually have that in front of my album's Calyx, so I can open up an album on the table. It's just a little easier for me. And I find that very, very helpful. Starting over here on the top right, I have two photo printers. I have a Canon Selfie, which is the black one. And then I have an Epson Picture Mate, which is the white one. And I use them for different things. The Epson has better picture quality, but the Canon Selfies are, they hold up to some damage. They can take some uh, handling. So I use those mostly for mini albums and out of the page protector type projects like my Smashbook because uh, they're a little more protected. <laughs> and the Epson I use for everyday photos in my scrapbook. I have a sewing machine that I've never successfully used, but put up there just hoping that I would be, you know, wanting to use it. I have some alcohol inks, some glitter pens, and some paint pens up here. I reach for the paint pens the most often I'm not really sure why the alcohol inks need to be on top of them because I move them every time, but there we are. <laughs> 
So over here, I have Dilusions paints. I have some Vicky Booten pigment powders on top and some Nouveau embellishment mousse at the bottom, along with a couple of just random texture paste and metallic paints. Next to that, I have, these are by the way, up on acrylic uh, steps, what are they called? You know, like shelf organizers. So they each have a step up and I just got those from Amazon. And then I have my Distress Oxides at the top and the rest of my Distress Inks and then my Vicky Booten paints at the bottom just because they're really pretty. I have my Texture Paste, Mixed Medium type things and Gesso all stacked up here. And then a couple of Prima palettes that didn't fit with the other ones. So they're just sitting there waiting for me to find a place for them. Up there, I have some regular uh, colored pencils, some acrylic paint, and my Heidi Swap Color Shine Sprays, Nuvo Stickles, Liquitex acrylic paint, ink. It's ink, not paint. So those all just sit in this nice little wire basket. And then here's the rest of my palettes from Prima and all of my Distress ink pads and specialty ink pads are all stacked up here. And back in that basket in the far back <laughs> are things I just don't use very often. So it's got a lot of Sharpies and paints that I just don't really reach for, but can't be bothered to throw away. And then over here, I have a couple of kits that are in progress that I use. I just pull them down and use them when I'm ready to. I have a baby kit for pictures of my niece. I have October's, not October, November stash kit. And then I have a kit waiting for December that I'm not ready to use yet. So it's just sitting there waiting for me. But now let's go down to the first level. This corner has a Bible, some stamp platforms. These two here are stamp platforms from Tim Holtz. Some big Prima stamps that I couldn't fit in my other container. This is a project for a Harry Potter themed watercoloring class. And I will give you a little peek at my progress. Sorry if this is shaky guys, one handing it. Yeah. So, little peek at that watercolor class. So I painted those. I have some empty journals. Uh, some of those are sketchbooks that are partially used, but not full. I have this little <laughs> figure guy that my kids keep changing his pose on me. So he's in a, an interesting pose at the moment. Behind him is just some stationary and colored pencils. Then I have a Vicky Booten uh, mixed media uh, pad, which is the pre-made mixed media in here, just because that's where it fits. I have some Bible journaling stuff. I have extra ephemera packs. So these are just bits and pieces that don't have a full collection to go with them. I just really liked the ephemera pack, so I bought it. And I help, I add these to my kits as well to kind of beef them up. These are some kind of sentimental things. I have a stamp that says handmade from the heart. I do use that on my cards quite often. This is sand from my first trip to the ocean. And there's some little shells in there. Kind of hard to see, but they're in there. Those did not come off the beach. They came from a little excursion we went to and they gave us a little package of shells. So I put them in there. And then this is an ornament my sweet friend gave to me when my dad passed away. I just keep it right there so I can look at it whenever I want. Next, we have my six by six paper pads. So this is all of my six by six paper pads that are not assigned to a certain collection. They're just loose, usually picked up from Tuesday morning. And this container came from Hobby Lobby, just like the one that my thickers are in. This container came from Michael's and it has all of my loose journaling cards. So the ones that don't go with a certain kit or collection come here to live. And I just, I flip through them and grab them out for my kits as well. Back behind 
Here are some pouring paint mixed kit that I've never used. <laughs> a finished mini album that has no photos. A couple more journals that are complete. And they were traveler's note notebooks that just busted open. So I, I don't have mixed feelings about those. So they just stay back there. <laughs> And then of course I have my albums. So this first one has my very first albums ever made. Very first one was an eight and a half by 11. And from there just got bigger and bigger. This is a vacation photo book that I put together of our first trip. That is my baby niece's first year album I'm still working on. And then from there it goes up by year. And there's a mix of sizes in there. I like to play around with different sizes and as you go down you'll see that continues onto the next shelf and the next shelf and the bottom are my kids albums so the red school the one with a lot of red albums is Alex's Chloe's has a variety of albums Joseph's are blue Olivia's are purple and Sophia's are pink so they all have their own little spot to go find albums. Back over here on the left side, down to the second shelf, I have my thread and embroidery thread and uh, stuff for my sewing machine that I don't know how to use. I have my pocket page, page protectors in 12 by 12 and six by 12 here, just to keep them separate from my other page protectors and make them easy to find. These are a variety of art books. Some of them I've worked in, some of them I have not. I have a couple of finished art journals there on the end. I have a flip through of this one on my channel from my 100 day project. And then this is my favorite cube. This cube has two four pack, memory, we are memory keepers, paper holders stacked up on top of each other. And on the first shelf, I put completed layouts. So I have a big stack of completed layouts for this month and I'm saving them for a layout flip through at the end of the month. And then after that, I have all of my single papers that I did not want to put into collections in my stash. So these are the ones I really want to use up first before I get into my collections in my stash. And I use these often in my stash kits. So here is my system. <laughs> The first shelf, which is unbelievably overloaded, is my neutrals, mostly wood grains, <laughs> but also black, white, and brown. Second shelf, the rest of them are in Roy G. Biv rainbow order of sorts. So I have uh, red and pink, orange and yellow, green and blue, indigo and violet. Then I have multicolored with a white background, so like, this, the background is white. And then multicolored without a white background, like this. And this makes for a really quick and easy way for me to put together extra papers for my kits. I really enjoy this system. I like flipping through my stuff. If you don't, you probably would like more of a divided system than this, but I really enjoy looking through papers. So don't mind that there's big stacks to look through. Next, I have a container, okay, it's acrylic container of Kiwi Lane templates that I never use. I keep saying I'm gonna try to use them. I've never really used them. I bought them uh, on sale and as a big kit and just never used them. Back here are empty albums that uh, could future be used, I guess. <laughs> a lot of traveler's notebooks. I don't really do traveler's notebooks much anymore. And then some circle templates that I use pretty often in my scrapping. Backing up a little bit, down to the third row, I have my washi. Okay, so I moved down onto the floor so I could get a pretty good shot of this. This is my washi and extra cardstock shelf. So I have extra cardstock here. That binder is empty. These are some paper, what are they, um, canvas pictures that my daughter got for her birthday that need to be framed. And I've just, they live there now <laughs> until I can get out to a craft store safely. I have some giant washi on top 
from Prima. And then I have this little container that is Recollections, I believe. And it has the rest of my washi just nicely by color. So pink and red. My metallics. And blues and greens and blacks. That's pretty much all I have, honestly. Uh, it's, it's a lot of washi, don't get me wrong. But I don't plan on buying any more. Because <laughs> I just don't use it very often. Next, I have my cards. So I have a couple of purchased collections of cards. I put my handmade cards up here. This one's empty. This one has my husband's childhood photos that I'd like to turn into an album someday. <laughs> <laughs> this one has empty albums and one of these has some church photos from camp in it that I haven't finished. So it's a partial project. The other three are other one, two, three, four are empty. Over here is my watercolor paper and uh, an art kit and a journal and a bunch of random brushes. Down here are some extra albums and regular page protectors. Then I have raw chipboard and heavy cardstock here for mini albums. I have too much of that stuff, but you know, I think we all do. This container holds uh, nothing important. Oh, it's got my fuse tool in it. I guess it does have something important in there. It has my fuse tool and accessories for the fuse tool and some empty bags, which is what I was looking at when I was thinking there was nothing in there. Uh, this has my die cutting machine. I have a big one and a small one. And then I have my dies. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that little friend. You stay there. I have my dies in this little system here, which I just made myself. And this first one is just loose dies. I've apparently gotten lazy and I'm not following my own system. But these are just a couple of rings. And I found these little bags and these magnet pieces on Amazon. And just made myself a little flip through. This one has stamps on one side that go with these dies. And then I just kind of spread them out so I can quickly flip through them. These are my most used dies. They're little confetti dies. And I usually just do the hearts and the, sometimes the flowers, but really just the hearts. And I think the stars, are there stars? Yes. So the hearts and the stars, I do um, gold foil paper with, and then I use them for scattering pieces on my layouts. And these are some Heidi Swap ones. These ones are We Are Memory Keepers. And I really liked this leaf die, so I just bought the set because I wanted that one. And these are just some words. And a Vicky Booten stamp that I assume goes with these dies here. So I don't have a ton of dies. To be honest, I don't use it very often. So that's why I don't have a ton of dies, because it's just not something that I reach for. I really need to put those away properly. <laughs> and then these are my son Alex's baby books. His his shelf has extended a little further <laughs> into the one next to it uh, because he's the oldest and he just has more albums, I guess. So let's go ahead and take a look in my craft closet next. So this is my craft closet. It has a shelf across the top and then I have a whole lot of cubes and containers at the bottom. And moving in, we'll start up at the top. So at the very top, I have a 31 bag that has my laminator in it. Three kits underneath. The white one is for my wedding album. The red one is for Christmas stuff. And the blue one is my sister-in-law and brother's wedding album. That red bag has empty containers in it <laughs> that I use for extra ephemera. Then I have a series of acrylic containers. Now these are divided containers. That one's a bit tight, so let me pull this one out to show you. So I have different uh, kits from Project Life separated in here. 
and I just pull them out when I want to do a pocketless page and cut them up. And I have <laughs> several of those. And then I have this container, which has bows and bags. So little tiny bows and all of those different types of bags. Underneath of that is this closed container that has cork. And then I have one for sequins and enamel dots are in the back. Then I have some tiny wood veneer pieces in this one. Some uh, random, this one is a mix of things. It's kind of, I don't know. This, no, this one has the tiny pieces. This one has the random mix of things. These are wood veneer words. These are from Redefine Creatives Kit Club uh, store. And this is my hot glue gun and supplies and mini albums are in the back there. Then there's these little butterfly clips that I've just randomly put across to make it pretty. Oh, he's turned sideways. There you go, lovely. So I have those just there. Somebody gave them to me and for some reason that's where I decided to put them. So down here in the back, I have a bundle of canvases that I haven't pulled out in quite a while. Some measuring sticks and a uh, some sort of mat back there. I have a container here. I don't know where this came from, but it's just a tall tub full of specialty papers. So acetate, um, some cut files, some, you know, just, just, just specialty papers that I really need to reach for more often because I have quite a few. Some empty containers, because I did a big purge a while back and now I have empty containers, which is a good problem. Room to grow. This container has uh, acrylic pieces, just random embellishments. They're not all full. Glitter. Um, charms, you know, just that sort of thing. Things I didn't know where else to put. <laughs> a small stash of buttons and more acrylic pieces. So that's it for that one. And underneath of these containers is a an Alex unit from Ikea. And they are labeled with different brand names. These are my favorites other than Cocoa Vanilla. And so each one has the kits and collections together in a bag. So I can quickly look and see what I want. I have memorized these collections, so I know what I'm looking for. And I just grab it and go. So the first two are Paige Evans. The next two are Pink Fresh Studio. And then I have Felicity Jane and Crate Paper. And so that's what's in this guy. It's just a bunch of collections that I'm holding on to and occasionally pull out for layouts. Now my ultimate favorite is Coco Vanilla. And so I have these, uh, what is the brand name of this? It's a lady's name, I forget. But they hold 12 by 12 paper, which is nice. Magazine holders, but they hold 12 by 12. So again, same system. I have all of my collections separated into two gallon bags and they're in order by when they came out. <laughs> no, I'm not neurotic or anything about Coco Vanilla. Anyway, this last one has Kaiser Craft and one Prima collection that I have only a little bit of. So some Kaiser Craft here. These are those really large photos you get from the schools. So I have a bunch of those. My label maker, photos from 1980 to 2011 that I've already scrapped those years and so they're put away. These are the extras. Same here, the extra photos from those years. Over here I have a little basket of sorts, a little crate, and it has partial kits in it. So these are mostly digital collections I've printed out or where I've just bought the paper pack and nothing else. Uh, so 
They usually have stickers with them and they're a great way to start a new kit and build from there. So that's what I use those for. Next to it is a cube that has uh, some Bible journaling supplies, envelopes, and cardstock for making cards. This little bag has some random tools in it that I don't really use. That is my backup trimmer. This is a Martha Stewart scoring board that I don't need anymore, but still have. And then I have a mountain of doilies, a mountain of doilies from Amazon, some stamps. These are specifically card sentiment stamps. So I just keep those near the card stuff. More card bases and envelopes. This is empty. It's just pretty, so I leave it there. Then in this cube, I have a couple of pre-made kits that I occasionally go to uh, just for something fun. This is Felicity Jane cardstock, and I love it and uh, hoard it instead of using it. And then these bottom ones are, uh, I guess that's got a partial kit in it too, uh, but this one is empty. And these are just Project Life boxes but they're make nice little trays <laughs> in this cube down there is a kit I've put together for an album I'm going to do for my dad the rest of this is empty and then these have the same thing as that Alex unit in black uh, the bottom four are empty but I have labeled most of the rest of them and they just have those specific collections in them these are my not my favorites but they're ones I love and so I, of course, keep them in their same two gallon bags. And that is how I store my kits and collections. So that's it for my craft room tour. <laughs> my crazy closet usually stays closed, if I'm honest. I hope you've enjoyed this look at my space. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. But until next time, bye guys.